Trevor Story's days might be numbered as a Red Sox top prospect was back in action and better than ever on Monday. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and the current host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. And honestly, who doesn't love free stuff, right? Might as well take advantage because Locked On is here for you with your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash MLB and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. And that's Locked On MLB all lowercase. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Red Sox, where the team just got back from the Dominican Republic for a cool two-game series against the Rays. Lots of culture there, lots of history for a lot of the players, so I'm going to be diving into that a little bit later on today's show. But first of all, Marcelo Meyer made his spring training debut on Monday after suffering a season-ending shoulder injury in 2023 so what happened with this talented prospect is he was drafted in the first round of the 2021 draft by the boston red sox expected to be a very good shortstop and then he started the season off well enough because he slashed a batting average of 290 with a 366 on base percentage and 524 slugging at high A Greenville for the first 35 games of the 2023 season, which earned him a quick promotion to double A Portland. But not long after he actually arrived in Portland, he battled this left shoulder impingement and ultimately played through the injury for several months before he went on the IL in early August. And he didn't put up good numbers in that time. When he got called up, it was a struggle for him due to likely how limited he was with his shoulder. He played 43 games and slashed just a 189 batting average with a 254 on base percentage and 355 slugging. And when he looked back at his struggles, it's difficult to know how much was the result of the shoulder injury and how much was him just being overwhelmed by the challenges of being young because he was only 20 at the time going into double a and he seems to think it was a mix of both i tend to agree maybe there was just a lot of pressure from transitioning from high a to double a which is tough for somebody at that age to overcome to begin with then you add in the injury that he dealt with and those are two things that are not really in his favor so people were wondering is it time to worry about him should we be panicking I was not thinking about any of those things the only way I could have justified maybe saying we need to keep an eye on Meyer is if people were saying is he gonna be injury prone is he gonna get hurt a lot which is a warranted concern because of the fact that he did face this shoulder injury so early on in his career. But other than that, it takes an adjustment period for any player to be called up to the next level. And obviously he was in pain this whole time. He should not have been playing through it. I would have encouraged the Red Sox to put him on the IL much earlier than they did, but they probably wanted to see how he performed in double A and give him some of those reps. But obviously it was something that was bothering him for a long time and it made him restricted in terms of what he could do at the plate. So the problem became that he lost key developmental time because he didn't play over the final two months of the season. But he was then given clearance to resume any and all baseball activities right before the start of spring training. So Red Sox director of player development, Brian Abraham, 
as the team was winding down its rookie development program at Fenway said it's been a long and arduous road for him with some ups and downs, but the team was excited to have him fully healthy for spring training and be ready to compete this year. Meyer did realize it wasn't the best idea for him to play through the pain and discomfort that he had been feeling in his shoulder, but he insisted on it. And when you're younger, you don't know your body as well. When you're a professional athlete, the longer you've been doing it, the longer and easier it is for you to recognize that pain and ability to say, I'm hurt and I can't play. And it's hard when you're a younger player trying to establish yourself in the organization to tell the team, hey, I'm not comfortable playing through this. So it's a tough spot for him to be in, and he really wanted to be on the field. But ultimately, he probably should have been benched earlier than he was so that he could recover. But he said going into spring training, he was feeling good. He did get held out of the mini camp hosted by Trevor Story, where he invited a bunch of middle infielders, both major leaguers and prospects. And Meyer had wanted to do it, but because he was still recovering, the Red Sox had him sit out, which was smart. So he was working on getting his swing back, kind of focusing on resuming baseball activities. And then on Monday, he made his spring training debut. He took one at bat in the Red Sox one to nothing win over the Pirates. And it was actually a double. He crushed a double to left field. And that's definitely promising. When you're looking at a player who you haven't seen play at Fenway yet, who you're really excited to be in your system, you want to see him develop his swing that's Fenway friendly. And that Fenway outfield is so big with lots of space to hit the ball deep. And if he's able to utilize all parts of the field, he's going to really succeed at Fenway. Not to mention his swing was absolutely beautiful. He crushed every part of that baseball. The sound of the bat was beautiful. And it went all the way to the wall in left field. So it's definitely promising for his ability to succeed when he does eventually get called up to the majors. And I'm interested in seeing him take more spring training at bats because I feel like this is only the beginning for this kid. One thing to keep an eye on, though, is his defense. He did have a couple defensive miscues at shortstop in his spring training debut, bobbled the ball a couple times, and That's not something to panic about right now or jump to conclusions on, but it's definitely something to keep in mind as he progresses through his baseball career is, is he able to improve defensively to the point where he's not a defensive liability? And I feel like some of that is just getting back in the swing of things, fielding live ground balls that live hitters are hitting to him and kind of getting back into it because he missed that time. And Yes, everyone's excited for his call-up, but because he missed that couple months of the 2023 season, we might start to see some delay in the time period at which people expect him to progress. And I'm not saying that that's anything at all to be concerned about. It actually isn't. It's pretty normal in the fact that he had just gotten called up to double A, hadn't spent that much time there yet. And if he hadn't gotten injured, then I would say I wouldn't be surprised if he has an opportunity in triple A earlier in the 2024 season. But because that was a key couple months where he could have been focusing on his development, he was instead focusing on recovery. So he wasn't able to get that same amount of time as other players. So don't be alarmed if it seems like he's being held back in double A or he's not developing at as quickly of a rate as you would want him to. He's still tremendously talented. I could see it in his swing and the confidence he displayed in that spring training at bat. He'll still be able to get called up eventually and be a big piece of this organization, but they might have to delay that process a little bit to allow his body to fully be healed and him to feel fully confident before he gets called up because this is not the type of player whose talent you want to waste. The last thing you want to do is call him up sooner and feel like you're rushing him up and feeling like he wasn't ready for the moment or ready for the opportunity yet. And then he loses the confidence and starts to not perform well because of that. 
this is a special type of talent that you want to conserve and call up at the right time, which will happen. It just might be a little bit slower of a process now due to him recovering from injury. But his offense and that at-bat he took was definitely a promising sign. I need to see some more at-bats from him during spring training to see his plate approach and understand how he goes about his swings and the types of pitches he's even swinging at to see how he'll fit in at Fenway that way. But keep an eye on his defense also. And Trevor Story, this could mean Trevor Story's exit. I mean, like I said, Meyer, they are going to take their time with, make sure he's fully developed before they get him up to the majors. But in the next couple seasons, he likely will be the starting shortstop and take Trevor Story's job. And if you have Vaughn Grisham in there, who's really excelling at second base, then there really isn't room for Trevor Story at that point. So the Red Sox have to kind of hope that he has a great 2024 season so that maybe his value is high and they try to trade him at the time where they see Meyer coming up. That would be the best case scenario for the Boston Red Sox because they might not need him for the rest of his contract. Or if they do use him for the rest of the contract, maybe they just try to sub him in at DH and he's more of a backup shortstop to Meyer. But look out, Story. This kid is coming for you and he's coming quick. So it was exciting to see Meyer make his spring training debut. And another player pitched in Monday's spring training game. And it's a player whose name has been tossed around to potentially be in the starting rotation for the Red Sox in 2024. Does that make sense? I'll dive a little bit into that next. Are you looking for the best way to play daily fantasy sports? If so, prize picks is the place for you. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's literally just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays alive. Testing your skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just two taps. It's so exciting, and it helps you win a lot of money. Tonight, I'm going to take Jason Tatum over 20 points. It's a pretty easy one to take. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 if you use code LOCKEDONMLB. It is highly encouraged for you to head to prize picks today so you can pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You know what's also easy? Checking out Locked On Sports today on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV as we as a network have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel where you can get caught up in the latest and all things going on in sports without having to worry about anything. So head to Locked On Sports today and all of our Locked On experts will keep you updated. The Boston Red Sox played a spring training game on Monday in their return from the Dominican Republic, and they beat the Pittsburgh Pirates one to nothing on the backs of solid pitching all around. A lot of guys got into the game, all of which looked really good. One that was notable, though, is Cooper Criswell. This is a player who Craig Breslow has talked about potentially being in the mix to be a starter in 2024 and I talked about this briefly on the show last week but my problem is that he pitched in 10 games in 2023 to the tune of a 573 ERA and didn't start any games so he doesn't have that starting pitching experience that we would need him to have in order to feel confident that he could start in 2024 and my concern is that he won't be able to be consistent and he won't be able to provide that kind of value. His MLB career, a 597 earned run average over just 12 games 
played and two games that he started. So he doesn't have a ton of experience at the major league level. And if I'm the Red Sox and I want him to start, I would proceed with caution on that because this starting pitching rotation is already very wishy-washy as it is. Lots of question marks and adding another question mark into the mix just doesn't sit well with me. However, he could be on his way to being part of the starting rotation. He did pitch in Monday's win. He started the game pitching 3.2 innings, giving up two hits and zero runs, and he struck out four batters in that time. So those are recipes for success at the major league level as a starter. If you're striking out four over three and two thirds. That's a solid number. That's definitely something he could work with if he continues to work on his game and elevate his style of play and his pitch resume. He can start to strike out more batters and be more successful on the major league roster. So it was a good outing for him. He looked confident out there, really didn't struggle, kind of cruised pretty easily through the innings. He only gave up a couple hits and was able to work around those pretty seamlessly. And he didn't walk anybody, so he had good command. And that's all promising. However, we can't really go off of this one outing and say he's ready to be a starter for the Boston Red Sox. He definitely needs to continue to work in spring training. We need to see more reps from him, more opportunities for him to pitch and feel confident that he's providing what the Red Sox need from him in order to feel like we can move him into the starting rotation. And when you're looking at a starting rotation with Brian Bayo, Nick Pavetta, Cutter Crawford, and Garrett Whitlock, or Tanner Houck, or Josh Winkowski, and then maybe Cooper Criswell as the fifth option, there's just a lot of gambling going on with that. Just Lots of uncertainties there. And Cooper Criswell just adds to the uncertainties. He's been used to pitching in the bullpen. So my worry would be mentally, can he handle what it takes to be a starter? Because it's an adjustment from pitching in the pen. Can he handle just that endurance that it takes to be a starter versus pitching in the pen? Can he handle the length of being able to throw a lot of innings? Because 3.2 innings is not a lot. A reliever can pitch that many innings if they're pitching well and they're more of a bridge guy to the closer or the eighth inning guy. If a starting pitcher struggles and has to be pulled in the fourth or fifth inning, a guy like that who can pitch three innings pretty consistently is a good pitcher to bring in at that point in the game. So the question becomes, can Chriswell sustain a level of competitiveness where he's able to pitch consistently deeper into the games. Because again, I've been pushing for length. The Red Sox need innings with their starting pitching, and they didn't get a lot of that last year. And if they're going to roll with Chriswell as the fifth starter, I'd like to be a little bit more confident that he's able to stretch himself out and pitch well later on. Because since he's used to being in the pen, as a reliever, he could go out there and pitch three innings well and record the outs and do what he needs to do. But this outing from Monday doesn't say enough to me that he's ready to transfer that over to being a starter in 2024. He needs to pitch more innings at a time. And even if he gives up a run or two, at least we know that he's getting his feet wet with pitching those lengths of times and being able to say, okay, I can now pitch five innings consistently as opposed to pitching three innings consistently. So I would like to see the Red Sox stretch him out more. However, I will give him credit for that start on Monday because if you strike out four, that's on your way to being in the starting rotation. Small sample size, we take what we can get for sure. If he's able to build up more confidence and build up more innings each time he goes out there during the rest of spring training, then we could see him announced as that fifth starter come opening day. And I just hope that whatever this plan is for the Red Sox, if they are banking on him being in the rotation, that it doesn't become an absolute disaster for them because I'm tired of a disastrous pitching staff in Boston. Chriswell certainly has a shot. He's showing glimpses of what he can do 
but we need to see more before we can just sit here and conclude, oh, he's ready to be in the starting rotation. So we'll see what happens there, but let's hope he can continue to build up that endurance, build up that stamina, and provide some value in the Red Sox starting rotation if they choose to put him there. Coming up, the Red Sox did get back from a series two games against the Rays in the Dominican Republic, and it was a great experience all around for everybody, so I'm going to be touching on that next. If you're looking for a way to constantly stream anything whenever you want, Amazon Fire TV is the place for you. I like it because you can see all of your apps on one screen, so you can open whatever you want to open. You can stream live sports. You can record things, go back to it, and it provides a lot of different channels for you, so you can watch really whatever you want whenever you want. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and even cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. The other thing you can find on Fire TV is Locked On Sports Today, which is the first ever sports 24-7 streaming channel, and it's available on YouTube as well. All the local experts here at Locked On will keep you up to date in everything going on in all things sports, plus our national shows that cover every league. So if you're constantly trying to keep up with everything going on, like for example right now with NFL free agency and a lot of craziness going on in the Twitter timeline, Head to Locked On Sports today, and we will get you caught up on all of the moves and all of the signings. The Boston Red Sox came back from the Dominican Republic, and they played a two-game series there with the Rays in which they won both games. They won the first game 4 to nothing, and the second game 7-6. to six. And this is a great experience for a lot of the players because some of them are from there. This is their native land, and they don't get to play in front of their families a lot. So it was a cool way for them to be able to play baseball in front of their families and showcase what they've been doing throughout their time in Boston. And they got to do some cool things, like Rafael Devers showed people around and The Red Sox really tried to maximize the experience. They had an arrival party on John Henry's yacht, and they just made it about more than just baseball. The baseball part was great, too, in Sunday's 7-6 victory over the Rays. That was fueled by a go-ahead grand slam by Bobby Dahlbeck and a save by Joely Rodriguez. So that just capped off a memorable weekend of both baseball and culture. Alex Cora really enjoyed it. He was actually quoted saying it was a great experience. This is the purest form of baseball. This is what we do, and it should be fun. I think both organizations did a great job being ambassadors of baseball. Devers and Bayo were both very excited. They were the headliners of the trip for the Sox, but it was a super fulfilling journey for everybody. It's cool for players like Devers, who just signed a big extension last year with Boston, and then Brian Bayo, who last week signed an extension with Boston, to go back to where they were raised and dreamed of playing professional baseball and have everything come full circle for them, all the memories of them playing baseball in the DR to now playing for the Boston Red Sox. It's got to be a dream come true for them. 
Red Sox outfielder Jaron Duran also really enjoyed it. He said it was awesome just having everybody together like that, joking around, having fun, spending a great time on a boat like that. I think it's good for morale and makes us feel like we're family. When you're at the field, it feels like we're close, but we're also at work. Doing stuff off the field like that makes it more like a family thing. I thought that was really powerful because he is exactly right. When you're playing 162 games of baseball, with your teammates, your routine is the same. You go to the field every day, you play the game, you go home, you come back the next day, rinse and repeat for the whole season, and you're showing up to work. And yes, you probably are friends with your teammates or around them all the time and you're talking to them, but it's a different feel because you're at work. Whereas in the DR, yes, they played a couple baseball games, but it was like a vacation for them too. They were able to do a lot of team bonding stuff, and it really helped enhance that culture of what the Boston Red Sox are about, of being a team and feeling like a family. And I feel like it was cool for some of these other players to learn more about the culture of the Dominican Republic and see where some of their teammates grew up and see how they were able to grow into the baseball players that they are today. I feel like it's such a good experience for the Red Sox to have done this because it's new and they were able to do not only baseball things, but also cultural things. And hopefully now they've carried that energy back with them and they have a familial feel going into the 2024 season of really feeling like they're more of a family and they're closer because that makes a huge difference in the clubhouse, which could impact their performance on the field too. If you have a team where the chemistry's off and the team doesn't feel close, that could impact your overall performance as a club. But if everybody enjoys being together and playing together and they feel like they've gotten to know each other on a deeper level, this could be very good for the Red Sox as a whole squad to be able to say, okay, I learned a lot more about him over the weekend and now I feel like we're a lot closer and we have more in common off the field and that's so important. Alex Cora gave John Henry and his wife Linda a compliment because he said they were setting the tone with their hospitality on the water hosting the team just hours upon landing in Santo Domingo. Cora basically said I think John and Linda went above and beyond accommodating the guys and having that private event. There's a few things in spring training that you try to accomplish. And one of them is that getting together as a group and start building who we are. And between Joely singing and guys having a few drinks and smoking cigars and talking for three hours in a nice setting, I think it was a great start. Because that's also low pressure to way to break the ice and bond with each other in a more comfortable setting, more casual, be able to have conversations about things other than baseball off the field. Even Cutter Crawford mentioned the chemistry. He said it's great from a team chemistry side of it. Over the course of this trip, you learned more about your teammates spending more time with them. I personally think the Red Sox should do this every year or something like it travel somewhere play a series in a different country that you wouldn't get to normally play in otherwise and take a team trip and take the opportunity to be able to bond with each other and connect on a deeper level outside of baseball I think that's so important for any team and I love that the Red Sox had the opportunity to do that because it hopefully gave a lot of the players a better sense of confidence heading into the season, more appreciation for the game that they love. And I know they weren't taking it for granted. It's cool to see the way that they were able to handle taking on this series and really admiring everything about the Dominican Republic and what it has to offer and being able to go and do activities outside of baseball that relieved stress took their minds off of playing for a bit and allowed them to get to know each other a lot better so I feel like it was a great experience for the Boston Red Sox hopefully they utilize that and take that energy into the season because it seemed like everybody had a great experience and hopefully it's something that they make a more regular thing because I think it's so important for teams to be able to do that so I'm glad they enjoyed it hopefully it translates over into the season because this Red Sox team if they feel like a family 
could help a little bit with what people are expecting out of this season. But we'll see how the rest of spring training goes. We are only a few more weeks away from opening day. It's really right around the corner. It's going to come quickly. So as you prepare for it, keep the faith. Go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.